You have? Yeah, of course I have. There's a few breedings. You regret and think, why did I do that? But if you didn't take that risk, you wouldn't have known where you were going to get. Oh, I've done, I've right. done, yeah, I've done some of that too. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think, I think, like, like, like you say, if you don't make mistakes, you ain't ever going to, you ain't even going to know. And you need to make these mistakes and you need to take the risks and you, and you have to put this money down. <laughs> Big lead exotic. I'm talking to my man, BH. First of all, Kong. Should have bring some exclusive talks to ya. All different machines, right? And the best machine that I've ever owned is an AIA 360. That is the reason why I've gone. I went out two weeks ago and I got another AIA 360. Yeah, because I was using the foreign cares. When I first opened up my first clinic, I had an AIA 360. Then I got rid of it and got a foreign care. Worst mistake of my life. Wish I'd never done it. Yeah. Yo, um, them, them, them two and a half grand foreign care from Smart Breeder. And you can, I don't know what the places are you buy them over here, but they're made in China. Yep. They're, they're, they're not accurate. They're, they're okay. If you can't, if you can't, at the end of the day, if you can't afford an 18 grand, 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand machine, you have to buy a two and a half grand machine. You're still going to get your girl to take off it, but you've got to run it off another machine so you can kind of basically figure out where the numbers sit. Where your right. numbers sit, because they are not accurate. There's about a 20 to 40% range in the fine cares compared to the IDEXs well, and you, the AIA 360s. Well, so why the number so important? Well, you got to well, you got to understand too. Um, with these uh, fine care systems, mm. they're from China. So, so in order for them to get the test strips and the products over here, they gotta ship it in a container, right? All the time. So, yeah. So when they ship it inside the container, right? What are they subjected to? They're subjected to the elements, yeah. the sun, the rain, all all the good stuff, the moisture. moisture. So as as it's traveling to another port, right? It's it's in contaminated with all that stuff. So most of the time, right? It's when they arrive, they're not gonna be as accurate because the temperature is hitting them. Don't but, tell the people why. So. Uh, important to do important, the progesterone test. Yeah, to do the progesterone test yeah, and it's, it's worry a about the it's number. Extremely, it's extremely, especially when females are about to get, about to get, uh, they're running into heat. It's, it's important to check their progesterone levels because obviously our progesterone level levels will explain to you uh, when they're producing their eggs. You know, inside of a female, they, when they become fertile. They're fertile, producing the eggs. Uh, you know, basically the, the whole process of making babies right? you, you got to remember yeah. not every female is the same it's like it's, it's like humans yeah women they have periods D does every woman have a period on the same day of the year uh, no. no so does every female ovulate at the same time okay because you got to remember back in the day before we had blood machines before we did cytology the old school way was day 11 day 13 yeah, yeah? now how can you say every girl every dog in the world is going to be fertile and they're going to drop their eggs right on day 11 and day 13. You can't because not every dog's the same. So sometimes you might have females that are ready on day 18. You might have females that are de de on day ready on day nine because you're never going to know exactly what day your, your female started bleeding because if your female's cleaning, cleaning herself or she's staying in the, in the kennel with another dog and that dog's cleaning that female, you're never going to know. So we always say to start testing numbers on day eight, but you said, why is it important to test numbers? It's important to test numbers because you need to know when your girl is dropping her eggs, when she is the most fertile, yeah? So, which is ready for mating, right? So anything over 30 nanomoles, yeah? Which in England, we use nanomoles. Here in the, in the, in the US, you use NG, yeah? So, you know, anything over 30 is ready for breeding, but we like to hit our girls on 60, 60 nanomoles for the first mating, and then straight away the next day, yeah, which would be about 100, 120 for second mating, yeah, because you're hitting all the all the right times on the numbers. If you hit the numbers on on the right days on the right right numbers, you get bigger litters, yeah. And not just that, you got remember, as the numbers are higher, the eggs then become softer, right? And she's dropped all their eggs. That's why if you breed when they first ovulate, say on numbers 30 ng, which you can breed anything over 30, because you got to remember. Once your numbers get to 30 NG, not NG, sorry, nanomoles, NG is the US way, sorry, obviously we use nanomoles in the UK, yeah. If, if, you, if you breed, you can breed anything over 30, but we breed on 60 because we know they've dropped all their eggs, yeah. Then we know when that, that, their eggs are starting to go soft. So that's why we like to breed on 60, then 100, 120, which would be straight away the next day. Um, but numbers are important because if your dog hasn't ovulated until day 18 or day 20, yeah, but you've hit your girl on the old school way, day 11, day 13. She's not even ovulated yet. 
So if she hasn't ovulated, that means she's dropped no eggs. So if you're breeding them the old school way and you're not testing the numbers and you're not doing protesterone tests, yeah, no, you can't tell if your dog has ovulated without doing them pedestrian tests. That's why it is important to do your pedestrian tests, hit your girls on the right numbers, and make sure you've got the right people doing the AIs, TCIs, or surgical, because that is the key. You know, I've seen a lot of people, they are insert the rod, they squirt the semen in, they put the dog straight on the floor. You see me? I'll hold that bitch up for 10 to 15 minutes in the air after I've done an examination, yeah? Because you've got to remember, the semen, even the semen's still got to swim down into the canal. The, the semen's still got to swim down down into there, yeah? Even though you've got rods and rods go right in, obviously it's different with the, with the TCI and it's different with the surgical because you're getting cut open and you're putting that sperm right inside the cervix. So it's different. But, you know, when you're doing AIs or when you, if, if you're doing a natural breeding, that dog locks to it, the sperm's got to swim down into the cervix to get there. But when you use a rod, you're putting the rod into the cervix. When you're using TCR, you're putting it into the cervix. When you're, when you're doing surgical, you're cutting them open and, and placing the eggs straight inside the cervix. So it's different. Uterine horns. Um, hey, say that again. Uterine horns. Which one's that? It's called the uterine horns. Yeah, yeah. uterine horns. That's what, what we've done. We, we, just, we just call it the same thing. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why... The UK majority of their litters be eight and nine puppies, and here we have having two, three, five. Yeah, see, I see this a lot. I see this a lot because a lot of people here in the US are not using the correct blood machines. you got to remember, you can go out and buy Louis Vuitton from the shop Louis Vuitton, but you could also go down the road to a backstreet shop and buy a fake pair of Louis Vuittons. That fake pair of Louis Vuittons is probably going to last you three weeks. That real pair is going to last you three months. Well, actually, what I think the issue actually with uh, for America, Americans versus UK is, uh, in the UK, obviously, they use these professional machines that are worth, what, 8,000 plus? Yeah. And in America, we actually use the machines that are actually considered rapid tests. What we're using is we're using rapid test machines. Um, they, they give immediate results between 15 and 30 minutes, for, over 15 minutes to an hour uh, for our results, but it's just it's just a broad spectrum range of what the the, uh, the the NGs would be, the projection level would be. Um, but with uh, the UK people, what I've noticed, especially with those those machines, uh, we've, I've actually used I've actually used it once. Um, those those machines are extremely accurate and they have to be calibrated um, regularly. I think it's regulated too, right? You have to be licensed. Yeah, no. So we, so so, so we, with the AIA three sixties, they got they got to be calibrated every month. Obviously, you're using chemicals. You know, they are the most accurate machines in the market. You know, like you said. That they're set to buy brand new at eighteen thousand. You know, we only use AIA three sixties in the UK because they are the most accurate. You know, people still use the Fine Care, the One Foes, yeah. But like I said, they are not accurate. That is, you know, unless you know what the numbers are on an, on on the difference between the One Foes and the AIA three sixties, and you've worked it out, you will not hit big litters. I, I see a lot of people use the one foes here in America, the fine care, yeah? Yep. They use a lot of them because they're cheap. Rapid test. They're easy to get and they're rapid test. But even the AIA 360s, within half an hour, 40 minutes, you get your test back out of the machine, yeah? So most of the time, it's probably about half an hour. It's normally about 15 to 19 minutes in the machine and then you'd be, you'd be spinning it for 15 minutes, you know, to take your plasma, to put your plasma into the machine. So, you know... There is a big difference when using these machines. Like I said, if your numbers aren't correct, and Im imagine you, you, you and somebody, you're bitching uh, early numbers and she's only dropped two eggs and the eggs, or three eggs, and the eggs aren't soft. Yeah, and there's only, you know, that sperm's got a latch to the eggs. If the, if the eggs have dropped, you know, the eggs are early, they're not going to be soft, they're going to be rock hard, that she's only just ovulated, you need to wait till she's ovulated, dropped all her eggs, and the eggs are starting to go soft. So that's why you need to be breeding on the correct numbers. And higher high numbers, the better. Like we said, for in the in the in the UK, we do it on sixty um, nanomoles, yeah, for first mating, and then straight away the next day. So in in America, which America, is what in America, was it? So um, so in America, ovulation is obviously at five. Uh, we breed two days after that. Generally, in two days, would be between a nine and eleven, which is the sixty, right? No, so. So, so twenty one ng would be twenty one ng is where you want to be breeding so two, two, your first mate. Okay, so so this would be twenty one ngs in America. We, we would classify as a nine to eleven uh, ngs, and then no. So what I'm saying is, 
you want you guys want to be breeding on twenty one ng out here. No, no, no. So, so our first one is nine to eleven. Yeah. So the second, the second one is on twenty one at twenty one. Twenty one. So we so we're doing our first one on twenty one, and then we're doing our second one straight away the next day. Yeah. Mm. Because when your numbers, I think around is it nineteen to twenty one. I think that that's nineteen to twenty one ng is about. I, I I believe. I think it is around the 30 to 60. I'll tell you what, I can tell you right now because I've got, I've actually got on my phone the converter from so, the N. So, so for IDEX, from the NG. Uh, ovulation is a five, a uh, progesterone level of five is ovulation. And then we obviously want to do two days, well, for trans cervical AI. So if you guys didn't know, we have three different methods of AI. We have uh, regular artificial insemination, trans cervical, and we have surgical insemination. So actually, all three of those have different methods and different timings, uh, generally with. Uh, regular artificial insemination. I see a lot of people do two types of inseminations. Usually, actually, on the yeah. first day of ovulation. The reason the reason they do that is because um, artificial insemination, the semen can so, last so you, and live up inside so you, there. You guys, guys, you guys are doing your first mating on, on what numbers? Uh, nine to eleven. That's for TCI. TCI. That's for TCI. Nine, nine to eleven. Yeah. Yeah. Nine, nine to eleven on a TCI. Nine to eleven. And then, so and then surgical AI, we do it at twenty one. Yes. Twenty twenty one. See, see, even with our AIs in England, so. You know, in England, you know, it's funny because where I live, yeah, I'm known, I'm known as Magic Fingers, yeah, and I'm known as Magic Fingers for a reason because I hit litters of elevens, tens, nines, eights, yeah, all the time, constantly, and that is just from two AIs with a rod, two artificial simulations, no TCIs, no surgicals, just AIs, but that's because we are hitting our females on their first mating on nineteen to twenty one point five. NG, which is 60 to 68 nanomoles for the UK, yeah? So that's where I think you boys in the US are going wrong. You're breeding your females too early when they've only just ovulated because when they've just ovulated, yeah, if you're breeding from 9 to, to 11, yeah, the, 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 the female no, has nine, only... Nine, 9 to 11, IDEX is different. IDEX. What's, what's our IDEX? Is that the same? Is that nanomoles? It's not nanomoles, no. Is it NG? Uh, it's not. I don't. It's not NG either. Hold on, let me see. Oh, see. So there we go. So now we're talking three different languages exactly. here. Exactly. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're talking NG. We're talking nanomoles, and now we're talking IDEX. So that's where you've got to really know your stuff about breeding. Because if you don't know your stuff about breeding, and you're using these different machines constantly, yeah, and you don't understand about pedestrian tests, you will not hit big litters. You, you know, it's a hard one because there's a lot of theories behind also hitting your numbers. So if you hit your numbers on certain numbers, you, you tend to get more girls or more boys. And there's been people working on this to, to figure it out of when they hit their girls on certain numbers, do they get more girls? Do they get more boys? You know, but we've always known and always had big litters and I always hit big litters, hitting my numbers on 60 nanomoles and then straight away the next day on 100 to 120 nanomoles. And I always hit sevens up to 11s um, on litters. And when you start doing bullies and pocket bullies, you're hitting 14s. Labradors, I hit 14s, 15s, yeah? Just from inseminating twice with AIs, hitting them on 60 and, and 100 and 120 the next day. It's facts. The proof's in the pudding. If you got to remember, I own three fertility clinics in the UK. I own one groomers, yeah? So I have been doing fertility now for about two and a half, three years, right? Do I learn something new every day? Yeah, I learn something new every day of the week owning your own clinics right and a lot of people say oh you know your numbers can't go more than double all right then if your numbers can't go more than double what's the explanation for a girl going from a from a seven up to a hundred yeah in the matter of two days when they say that your girl can't technically go more than double so if she was on a seven or a ten yeah they would only be able to go 20, uh, from 10 to 20 from from 20, 20 to 40, 40, yeah, in two days. Yeah, so so even if you say worst case scenario 80, yeah, how do you explain your girls on 100 within two days? Because they can spike. People would say, oh, your machine's not calibrated, this or that. Okay, you go run it on someone else's machine. Numbers come back exactly the same. Right, shit, so what are you doing now? Sometimes your girls will just spike. The weather can change your girls. The, you know, stress so can change. at 100, would you hit her? I would hit, I hit, I still hit that bitch on 100 nanomoles, yeah? And I'll still hit her again the next day because I've got nothing to lose because if I'm paying for the stud anyway, I'm still going to hit that bitch twice. And even if it's my own stud, I'm still going to hit that bitch twice, even if her numbers are high. 
I've bred a female before on 125. I did one mating on 125 nanomoles, yeah? Which would be, which would be in NG, yeah? You're talking 35 NG, 40 NG. I've walked away with seven puppies, one breeder on 125 nanomoles, which would be 40 NG in your, in your talk. No, 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 I don't think it's 40 NG. Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, because yeah, uh, 90, 90 is 28.3. So if we're talking 100, it's got to be about what? 35, 40? It's the NG, right? Yeah, so NG is 28.3 for 90, 90 plus, which is very reduced fertility. But you've got to remember your eggs are soft. So if your eggs are soft, the American bitch is still well. going to take. The only time the bitches ain't take when I've bred on high numbers is when I've done like 130 nanomoles. Anything I find over over 125 is never taken. Anything. So, 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 so look, so I'll be here, look, so basically, look, in, in America, right, so our standard of testing, right, is, mm. is actually called the IDEX. The main machines that we use mm. are the IDEX, which is like basically the, kind of similar to what you guys use. Yeah, which are the AIA 360s. Yeah, the, the most expensive machines that we have, they all run off of IDEX. All the, if you go to any veterinarians mm. in America, they all use IDEX machines only. The name, the, the company and the name is called IDEX. So for obviously for us, um, IDEX, uh, for us, out of five, right, where it ovulates, is going to be a nine. Or in in, in mini vitis, which is considered NGs. So what was it in so, animals? So, do, you have, so, do you have animals on there? It's not in animals, but look, when you said forty, right? Uh, at forty, right? When you do the AI, it's this is this is at twenty one for us. Twenty one. Twenty one is when all the eggs are present. Yeah, but that's different for the IDEX. What is it on NG? NG is forty. So I was right. Same thing. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Absolutely. When it's in the NG, I don't know the IDEX because the IDEX is different. We don't use IDEX in the thing. So we we stick with the standard. Well, we I specifically. Uh, preferred to stick to the standard of IDEX because the machines that I use actually you know they're good. Yeah, Korea, well, the machines that I use are specifically from Korea. Mm. And the reason we, the reason why I got it from Korea is because when they ship stuff over, you know, it's all it's all in a cool container. Everything's all refrigerated, basically, you know, as they're shipping it over. So they have better levels it, of care. It's shipped correctly. It's shipped properly, yes. So that's why I use the machines because all the so with the refrigerated. machines you're using, do you always hit big numbers? It depends uh, when where my female is, but most of the time. Um, I do surgical AI. I prefer the surgical AI methods. I think they're uh, it's just a lot easier, more efficient. Um, it's it's less, I'd say less less to work in general. I mean, for me, it's a hard one. I I don't I've never done surgical. I don't like surgical because I believe cutting them open, putting it in, and having to cut them open again two months later to, to take the puppies out is 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 a lot of cutting your dog open. Wear and tear. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of well, wear and tear well, on the female. Well, you know, I, I deal with a lot of ship semen. Mm. Um, I actually. So, so, so surgical is better for, for the ship semen, so, isn't it? Yeah, so basically I don't do a lot of local breedings. Mm. Um, I don't do a lot of, uh, when I do a lot of ship breeding, that's what I do a lot. And the thing so is- that's why you do breeding, surgical. Yeah, so when you do ship semen, right, basically you ship semen from anywhere, especially UK, uh, you ship semen from anywhere around the world, you're not going to get it fresh. You're, right. you're going to get it basically like a day old or a couple yeah, days old. Of a chilled or, or frozen. So, so obviously when it's a couple of days old or one day old, right, you're obviously going to lose motility, number one. You're going to lose motility. You're also going to lose- uh, semen count. So the best yeah. way to get all the semen count inside uh, is to do a surgical AI where you do an interior, exterior and interior incision, pull out the urine horns and you inject them both inside the urine horns. The reason why you inject both inside is because right where you're injecting is where the eggs sit. So when you have the time right numbers, uh, inject them in and it lands right on the eggs and it inseminates the whole entire thing. It's a one and done process. So see, see in England, that's illegal. We're not allowed to do that. Yeah. When, you know, in England, you're not allowed to do a TCI unless you're, unless you're a veterinary. You know, you're not allowed to. You're not allowed to. You know, you're not allowed to take your own bloods in unless you're unless you work at the vets or you're a veterinary. You know, so even for all the clinics, we have to have vets that take all our bloods. You know, they put our bloods for us, bring them in. We spin them. You know, we run the bloods and stuff like that. But you know, we're allowed to do AIs. We're allowed to do scans. We're allowed to do microchipping. You know, and all that sort of stuff. But when it comes down to surgical, they they they, they frown upon it. They don't like doing C section as it is in the UK. Yeah, there's only you know a few vets in in, in you know. Most of the vets up north there do C sections. Obviously, Diego's vets they do C sections, but a lot of the vets down south where we live, they won't even do a planned C section. They will only do emergency C sections if the the females is basically pushing the pups out there and then it's the only time they'll do a C section. So, you know, with that down to the surgical, we're not allowed to do it at all in the UK. Okay. So I, I think I think with American and UK standards, completely different. Yeah, it's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. But I think if we brought you know, if I was to come to the US and I was to set up my clinics like I do in the UK, which I will be doing, um, you know, which we will be getting clinics and shops and, and all sorts of things opening here in the US, 
I will bring the machines over from the UK. I think personally, because us having something different to what everyone else has here in the US, people will come to us. A lot of people use IDEXs, yeah? But why, if we're hitting big litters 24 seven in the UK because of the way we do things, if we bring that same machine, exactly how we do it in the UK, over here to the US, people are gonna to wanna to use us all the time. If people know that you're hitting big litters constantly because you're hitting the numbers right, and then it will kind of change it a bit over here because you won't just have the IDEX, you won't just have the, the IDEX numbers, you won't just have the NG numbers, you're gonna then have the, the Nanimal numbers the here as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So people can run off nanomoles as well. Absolutely. And can see the difference between using the AIA 360, the IDEX, and the fine cares and one foes and the one, you know, the China jobbies. <laughs> China jobbies. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, it's, it's true though, but you've got to remember, we're, we're all from different sides of the world, yeah? So everything we do is different, but the same. Same but different. You know what I'm saying? We still mm -hmm. do maintenance, we still run bloods, we still do scans, we all do it, but we do it different. You know, different machines, different equipment, different ways. Right. You know, like you guys do surgical. We're not allowed to do surgical. We do and we do mostly AIs. We can do TCI, but not a lot of people do the TCI anymore. Everyone that I knew I know do AI. AIs. And we have very big success rates off AIs as long as you hit your pedestrians correct, you do your AIs correctly, right? And that's basically what it's about. And your dog semen is obviously the mobility and the strength of the semen is running on all cylinders. You know, they're the three keys, AIs, bloods, and the semen. Absolutely. If right. you get all three of them right, and that and there's something not right with that bitch and she's still not taken, or she's still having small litters, then that's because your bitch don't drop enough eggs all the time. Because you've got to remember, some bitches aren't always going to drop the same amount of eggs as the next bitch. Right. But like 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 humans, we have problems, we get ill. Yeah. People get, you know, illnesses, people lose limbs, can get cancer and stuff like that. So you wouldn't know if your dog, say for example, sample couldn't get pregnant. Like a human. Some humans can't get pregnant. They don't drop eggs, they don't do this. It's the same for dogs. Same that. Same Why is it gonna be any different? But you wouldn't know that. Yeah. You might have one bitch. I know people in the UK, they've tried breeding their bitches time after time after time, never take. Even I said, let me try and take, let me try. Let me, let me ask you a question. Do you, re what part of the game do you regret? What part of this? What do I regret doing in the game? All this. What, what part of the dog game? Do I regret? I because regret. a lot of people see the, 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 the fun side. They see, they didn't see the marketing. They didn't see all the tussle, the late night hustle, the late night long well, phone calls. I probably only got one regret i wish when i come into this game i understood it better and i wish that i never brought young females i wish when i first come into the game i knew and i know people are going to say oh but then you didn't create your own no fucker created their own dogs you all had to buy somewhere first to be able to create your own pathway right yeah 100%. Did, did, did you buy off someone did Absolutely. you buy someone Absolutely. so but as a puppy yeah Right. I wish I never brought puppies. I wish I went out. I mean, because and we, I brought older we, we listen to a better quality. We listen females. to the breeders selling point. We listen to the breeders selling point as in, oh, you need to buy this and this to produce your own. Then now you have your own production, right? But it's never really your own. It's production. never your own production it's, because it's true it, you, to a degree. To a degree. You to a degree it, is the only thing you did is you made your own set of puppies that was made off of a line that you went put together. It's always bought, someone else's line, but it's you make your own style. So then that right. style becomes yours, then them lines end up becoming yours because that's a style of lines people want. Because when you bought something, you you bought that, but now you want to turn it into your vision. And when you've taken someone else's and put it into your vision, it then becomes yours. It was someone else's, you've taken someone else's vision and you've turned it into your own vision and now you're selling your vision to other people. That's like your vision. Right. Like your con lines. Absolutely. You got that from someone else at the beginning, yeah? But you made it to how you wanted it. I picked. So Kong wasn't like Kong. Kong. No one produced anything like Kong before you. I I, I saw so so what a friend of mine, he uh, he bought he bought a stud from the UK. I really like the stud a lot, and I just told him straight up, I, I want a female off of that, and he provided me a female off of, off of that. I bought it, of course, and the next thing you know, I, I picked the stud that I wanted, 
put her with him because I really Just like this guy. You took him lines from there and lines from Ooh, there. That's how, I, that's how I produce calm. And put, yeah. and that's what I'm saying. So my, my regret in the game is I wish I brought older females and I wish I had thought about some of the dogs before just rushing in and buying them. But unfortunately, if you don't make mistakes in life, you can't learn from them. Right. You have to make mistakes to learn from your mistakes. If you don't learn from your mistakes, then how can you move forward? You need to you need to make mistakes to learn from them. Right, right. But it's time for some. So, so no, if you can learn is. from a mistake before you make a mistake, then yeah, then you save you saving other people time. We didn't have no one to mentor us when right. we started in this game. When I when I first opened my clinic, I didn't have no one to mentor me. You know, when I first started dog breeding, I only went into dog breeding because because my wife got ill and she started having strokes, so she couldn't go back to work. And we had four French bulldog as pets. Then pets kept her going when she was led in bed, couldn't even paralyze. Yeah, so we decided to set our whole business up around her having these strokes because the whelping and the breeding is something she could do from home. So when we got into it, yeah, we, we had these dogs as pets. So mm. we didn't have a clue what we were doing. We didn't have anyone to mentor us. We didn't have anyone to tell us what to do. We didn't any, have anyone to tell us how to whelp and litter, how to birth and litter, no nothing. That's the same here. I went and bought two dogs, ain't know nothing. Didn't know nothing. I didn't realize I had a horse sitting in my lounge. Yeah. I thought I had a French bulldog. That's all I knew. You know what I'm saying? But you learn from these mistakes. Oh, but but when I was buying, when I was doing the breeds with other people, other breeders, they was gassing me. You know, they happy that you spending more money with them, but they not guiding you. Telling you the correct way. Right. I re I would have been more more. I would have took it more better if if if, if the, you to say, hey man, you got a, a pretty dog. But, that, but it's not something that you should build your program off of. Then I would have been able to went home and the money. right. But I'd have went home and rethought about is I'm gonna take this and make my program out of it, or if I'm gonna take this because they always say tra uh, trash is another man's treasure. Yeah, they do. They do. So, oh, and and all this all this building is is opinion because it's what it's what you like. Not what he like is what you like. You know yeah. what I mean? So there's a listen. You got to remember, I've come. I've now been coming to the US for a couple of years. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people talk shit on social media. I've seen a lot of people give it big spots. Yeah, and talk about how they've got the best in the world. They've got the best dogs. They've got the best this. They've got the best for structure. Well, hey, hey, yeah, I just see it because you know it's it's funny. No, it's no. Funny. Do you know what it is though? <laughs> do you know what it is though? They've been talking so much shit over IG for years. Now the people from the UK have actually been coming to the US. And half of these dogs up here, they ain't what anyone makes up for them to be. And, I, and people ask me when I come back from the shows, oh, so are the Americans dogs what they, everyone says they are? I said, yeah, half of them are, but the other half are dog shit. <laughs> yeah, facts. 50% or 25% of what people say their dogs are are actually what their dogs are. Well, you or, know, you know, we, we're the land of... Uh... Gaslighters, you know what I'm saying? You know, <laughs> you know, that's what we're known for. <laughs> but you know when people talk shit about dogs when they've never seen your dogs or oh. they've never been to the UK and never oh, yeah. seen dogs of the UK. And this isn't just aimed at America, but you got to remember, I'm talking from experience. I'm talking of coming to America, coming to a lot of shows, a lot of people talking shit on IG towards us because they don't like what we're doing in the game or they don't like where where people make our, make our positions to be, yeah? So... I've come to the US and I've seen these dogs with these people that are talk shit on IG. And their dogs are, are nothing. Their dogs are bags of shit and I wouldn't pay fucking five pounds for them. And they pay 25 and 30,000 for them. Yeah. And they give it all the big spots. But it's the same in the UK. We have dogs that aren't the best, but people think that there's better quality. A lot of people here in America think they have the best quality dogs. And now I've been to America and I've been to the UK and I've seen dogs from both. A lot of people just don't know how to a lot of take people... constructive, constructive criticism. They don't want to say, I... you, they can't say, it's like they treat their they dog like their kids. So it's like basically you say, hey, you got a pretty ugly dog. <laughs> you know what I mean? So they go get offended behind that. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? They just can't because they can't handle yeah, it. They can give it. Oh, they, they can give it all they day. Can't handle it. Yeah, I mean... But the problem is we ain't in competition with no one. It's not you a know, competition. And, and, and another thing, too, is, like, that's the beauty of it, too. You know, like, you have different areas, different countries, different lands, and we're all bringing a different style of thing. Complete and, different and, style. And if they want to have 
be best or be best for their program, right? Because mm. you know, you have a program, everybody has a specific program on how they want to breed their dogs. You know, if they want to have the best for the program, they need to outsource their 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 their, their supply from yeah, somewhere else. Sure. And the problem is people prevent themselves from doing that all the time because for a lot, a lot of reasons, cost, uh, shipping, you know, the whole nine yards. So you gotta mm. figure out what's best for your program at that time. Because I think a lot of people, well, I mean, I, I do the EBs, the English Bulldogs. Do you make sacrifices? Though? You have to make sacrifices. Do you yes. make sacrifices? Did you make a sacrifice to say, hey, I didn't want to use my neighbor dog, yeah. even though he was going to give me a hell of a deal? Yeah. But no you know, time is for essence. Right. You know, time is for essence. So yeah. did you make that sacrifice to say, hey, well, I, I know there's. I'm going to not pay this light bill and this gas bill and do breeders this breeding. That, there's breeders that I chose to do that I regretted doing after I've done it. You have? Yeah, of course I have. There's a few breedings you regret and think, why did I do that? But if you didn't take that risk, you wouldn't have known where you were going to get. Oh, I've done, I've right. done, yeah, I've done some of that too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think, I think, like, like you say, if you don't make mistakes, you ain't ever gonna, you ain't even gonna know. And you need to make these mistakes, and you need to take the risks, and you, and you have to put this money down. What, what a lot we're finding these days is everyone wants something for nothing. For nothing. And after all the money and the time and the hard work we've put in, why should we just go and give it to everyone else for nothing? and give it to them on a plate and not make them work for it. Because I certainly know I didn't get no handouts. I ain't got no rich family. I didn't get no mum and dad pay for any of, my, any, any of my business, any of my dogs, any of my shops. I did all that, not just on my own, but with me and my wife, we did that together as a team. And we didn't have no one else to help us do that. So everything we've got, we appreciate what we got. We don't care when people talk shit about what we got. Only reason people are talking shit on what we got, because they ain't got it and they can't yeah. get to it. And they'll never be like BH, yeah? And they're never gonna fucking tour the world like, yeah. like we do it. Yeah. And they ain't gonna be like our team. They ain't gonna be like Versables. No, they ain't gonna be they like Big D's like Exotics. Me. They ain't gonna be like BH. They ain't gonna be like KKS. Absolutely. They ain't gonna be like how our team do it. Yeah. Because people don't wanna put in that 150%. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what it's gotta be know, about. BH. 150%. Know. Most people, yeah, that they're, they're they're either brought into it or that that their, their, their parents were already doing it. So their parents have gave them dogs brought them down, passed it down to them, yeah? They haven't had to spend no money. They haven't, they haven't had to put no proper Not hard that. work in. Not even like that. Like we've had to. Nobody ain't doing this what we're doing. It's 1.30 in the morning. They're not doing what we're doing. It's 1.30 no. in the morning. We got a flight at 4. We out here, we doing it, guys. You know what I'm saying? You know, listen. You know Just what... to give them the knowledge that they want, that they need. Yeah, what people don't understand is, is, is the background work. Everything we're doing behind the scenes. You know, I've come over. I've come over from the UK, yeah, for five weeks. I've come to Houston, yeah. Then I'm going down to Miami. Then we're going to Las Vegas. Then we're going over to California. Then we're going to New York, yeah. Carolina. Then Carolina, and also, you know, m my wife is at home with my mother, welcoming litters. You know, then she's coming over at the end of the month, yeah, so she can experience a little bit. But all this money, time, and hard work that we're putting in behind the scenes, like you said, half past one in the morning. We've got to fly to Miami at four in, in, in two and a half hours. We've got to leave for the airport. But we're still sat here now talking about dogs, talking about DNA, talking about the market, talking about our regrets, which a lot of people don't do. Yeah. So we can actually give people, you know, something to do while they're whelping, something to listen to, something to think about. Insight. Yeah, insight. And, and maybe people, if we can talk about our mistakes and talk about things that we regret or talk about the game, it can open people's minds a bit more and maybe stop them from making the same mistakes we've done. Or, you know, if people want mentoring and, you know, people sometimes say, oh, what, well, we've got to buy a dog for us for you to mentor us. Yeah, that's right. You've got to buy a dog for us to mentor us because this shit ain't free. Nothing's free, right. Nothing's free. But they want it for free, though. But they want it for free. But at the end of the day, when you buy dogs from us or you, or you work with us, whether it's a co-owner or whether it's an outright, we will mentor you. We will help you because you've come to us and put money in our pocket. You've helped us. You want to be part of our vision and our program. And, it's, a and it's a duty and a privilege. To, yeah, and it's a privilege for us to be helping you out. If, if you, we don't, like I said, we don't class ourselves as who's a bigger breeder. But unfortunately, there's always going to be people more experienced than us, people less experienced than us, people that's got more knowledge than us. You know, people are going to sit here and watch this and go, oh, they don't know what they're talking about. They don't know. Yeah. Where are they at? Where are they at now? Where are they at? Where are they at? I don't see them. They ain't here. But you know, listen. What we're talking about might, may not make sense. It's maybe not all scripted out and put into one, and it's maybe all jumbly, yeah? But at least we're sat here talking from the heart, talking about the DNA, talking about the dogs, you know, talking about our life experience within the dog game. 
about what we see through our eyes every day. You know, I know a lot of breeders that have been breeding a lot longer than me and they've not even put in half the work that I put in in this short amount of time. But they're complaining. Of they're complaining. They're complaining about their situation right now and they've yeah, been doing it twice as long but haven't did a quarter worth of work that we... 20 done. years. We ain't, they, ain't put, they ain't did a quarter worth of work that we didn't done. I mean, for, for example, difference? how many people have they brought new to the game? That's what trips me out. Okay, yeah, you can repeat sell your same customer another dog. You know what I mean? Absolutely. That's the goal. Mm. But at the end of the day, what are you doing for the community? I, it's not a community no more. It's more of an industry. What are you doing for the industry to make it last? No one's doing nothing. What? Okay. Because they don't want to see everything. So why, why, so why do you, do you, why do you complain to the guys that's making the move to make the industry because that's the for move, what it is. That's the move they've dreamed about making all their life, but they're too lazy to get off their ass and go and make them moves. Are they, they scared to, to sacrifice? Risks. Yeah, there's no, no, no risks, no rewards. They don't want to take the risks. So they ain't going to get no rewards. If they ain't taking risks. How can you expect to get your rewards? Right, right. We're taking risks. I know I've done almost a million. Facts. Who, mommy and daddy didn't give me none of that. No one else gave me that. I had to go out and earn that. I had to put that money in as, as, as a risk. I risked that money. Risk it. To you try and it. hopefully get some reward out of that. Facts. So when we're selling dogs and people are getting jealous because we're still selling dogs and they're going, oh, how are they selling dogs? They're not even good quality. Ours are better quality and we can't get the money from them. What makes your dog better quality than my dog just because you say your dog's better quality than mine? Because his opinion. But you can't sell your better quality dog for more than I can sell my poor quality dog as you say so. Because Facts. you ain't putting the time in. You ain't putting the hard work in. You're only putting 50% in. We're putting 150. We're putting an extra 100 on top of your 50. 1,000%. You know what I'm saying? 1,000. They can't stop us. ain't stopping us. That's why we're they sat in now in Tristan with big leagues, with Versa Bulls, sat here, talking up, <laughs> taking up your time. <laughs> <laughs> Piss, man.